I went to the doctor, and uh, usually him and I are joking around, having fun and laughing and stuff, and he walked in the room after doing a battery of tests on me, and he just had this look on his face. I hope it does. I hope it hurts like hell. Michael Clark Duncan is a name that resonates with a blend of towering presence and tender-heartedness, a persona both larger than life and deeply human. His journey from the tough streets of Chicago to the luminous marquees of Hollywood is a tale of resilience, talent, and unexpected twists. With a stature commanding attention and a voice that could simultaneously soothe and intimidate, Duncan carved a niche in the world of cinema that few could parallel. Yet his sudden departure from this world at the age of 54 in 2012 left a void, not just in the entertainment industry but in the hearts of millions who admired him. Now it appears there might be more to things than we initially knew. Duncan suffered a heart attack in July and died in Los Angeles today. Duncan's rise to stardom was as remarkable as it was challenging. Raised by a single mother, his early life was marked by financial struggles and personal hardships. His mother's determination and protective nature, alongside his own unwavering focus and ambition, set him on a path toward an unforeseen destiny. Rejecting the lure of street gangs and the rough environment of his upbringing, Duncan pursued his dreams with relentless vigor. His initial roles, often typecast as the intimidating bodyguard or bouncer, did little to showcase his full potential. It was not until his breakthrough performance in The Green Mile that the world truly witnessed the depth and range of his talent. As John Coffey, Duncan delivered a performance that was both heart-wrenching and powerful, earning him critical acclaim and an Academy Award nomination. Off-screen, Duncan was known for his generous spirit and commitment to animal rights, often using his platform to advocate for causes close to his heart. His decision to transition to a vegetarian lifestyle for ethical and health reasons further highlighted his compassion and conscientiousness. However, Duncan's life was not without its complexities, particularly in his personal relationships. His romance with television personality Omarosa Manigo, which began in 2010, was a significant chapter in his life story. Following his sudden myo cardial infarction in July 2012 and his subsequent passing in September, the narrative around Duncan took a contentious turn. Allegations emerged, centering on Manigo and her involvement in Duncan's will and estate. Family members accused her of manipulating the actor, leading to a bitter legal and public dispute that cast a shadow over his legacy. But what else did we miss in the life and subsequent death of the celebrated actor? Stick around to find out. Born on December 10, 1957, in Chicago, Michael Clark Duncan's journey was one sculpted by adversity, resilience, and a relentless pursuit of dreams. The son of a single mother, Jean, Duncan's childhood was framed by the absence of his father, who left when Michael was just five years old. Despite the void, his mother's unwavering strength and nurturing spirit played a pivotal role in shaping his character and values. Jean, who once harbored aspirations of becoming an actress, instilled in her son a deep appreciation for the arts and an understanding of the power of perseverance. Duncan's childhood in Southside Chicago was far from idyllic. The neighborhood, rife with gang activity and economic challenges, presented a backdrop where survival often trumped dreams. Yet Duncan, towering in stature even as a young man, sought a different path. His mother's protective instincts were palpable, especially when she forbade him from joining a local gang during his teenage years. An intervention marked by a memorable incident involving a frying pan and a demand to renounce his brief gang affiliation. This tough love approach extended to her prohibiting his participation in high school football, fearing for his safety. This decision, though initially a source of disappointment for Duncan, inadvertently steered him towards the path of acting. His mother's support in this pursuit was not just passive but enthusiastic, recognizing perhaps a glimpse of her own unfulfilled aspirations in her son's ambitions. Duncan's educational journey was marked by its own set of challenges. Opting for a GED instead of a traditional high school diploma, he found himself grappling with limited job prospects. His early work life was a patchwork of odd jobs, including working in ditch digging to support his family, especially during the periods when his mother fell ill. It was a testament to his commitment to his family and his adaptability in the face of hardship. The turning point in his career trajectory came when he ventured into the world of personal protection. 
His formidable presence made him a natural fit as a bodyguard, a role that saw him safeguarding some of the biggest names in entertainment, including Will Smith, Jamie Foxx, and Notorious Big. However, the untimely death of Notorious Big served as a grim reminder of the risks inherent in this line of work, prompting Duncan to reassess his career path. The late 1990s marked the beginning of a new chapter for Duncan in Hollywood. His foray into acting, initially characterized by typecast roles that leveraged his imposing physique, soon gave way to opportunities that showcased his range and depth as an actor. His breakthrough role in Michael Bay's Armageddon not only marked his transition from the fringes to the forefront of cinema, but also led to a life-changing friendship with co-star Bruce Willis. Willis, recognizing Duncan's potential, was instrumental in helping him secure the role of John Coffey in The Green Mile, a performance that would earn him an Academy Award nomination and firmly establish him as a respected actor in Hollywood. Duncan's portrayal of John Coffey, an African-American man wrongfully convicted in 1935 Louisiana, was more than just a career-defining role. It was a nuanced, deeply empathetic performance that transcended the screen, touching the hearts of audiences worldwide. The character's quiet strength, vulnerability, and extraordinary abilities mirrored Duncan's own journey, one of overcoming barriers and defying expectations. Yet, for all the acclaim and success, the big man remained grounded. His commitment to causes like animal rights and his transition to a vegetarian lifestyle spoke volumes about his character. It was this blend of gentle giants and compassionate activists that endeared him to so many. The late 1990s and early 2000s marked a defining era in Duncan's career, a period that saw him transitioning from peripheral roles to becoming a central figure in Hollywood's storytelling landscape. His role in Armageddon was a turning point, allowing him to step out of the shadows of typecasting and into the spotlight. As Bear, Duncan not only showcased his imposing physicality, but also his ability to bring warmth and humanity to his characters. As mentioned before, the friendship he formed with Bruce Willis on the set of Armageddon proved to be a catalyst for his career. It was Willis who recommended Duncan for the role of John Coffey in The Green Mile, a film adaptation of Stephen King's novel. This role presented Duncan with a profound opportunity to display his acting prowess. As Coffey, a gentle giant with supernatural abilities, is wrongly accused of a heinous crime, Duncan delivers a performance that is both powerful and heartbreakingly tender. His portrayal resonated deeply with audiences and critics alike, earning him an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor. This role was a departure from the stereotypical roles often assigned to actors of his size and stature. In Coffey, Duncan brought to life a character that was at once intimidating in his physicality and touching in his innocence and vulnerability. His performance broke barriers, challenging the industry's perceptions and opening doors for more diverse and complex roles for actors like him. Following The Green Mile, Duncan's career diversified, showcasing his versatility across a range of genres. He appeared in action films like The Scorpion King and Daredevil, where he played the villainous kingpin. In these roles, he again utilized his physical presence to great effect, but it was his ability to infuse these characters with a sense of depth and nuance that set his performances apart. Duncan also explored the realm of comedy, bringing his distinctive charisma to films like The Whole Nine Yards and its sequel. His comedic timing and ability to play off other actors demonstrated that his talents extended far beyond dramatic roles. Beyond the big screen, Duncan's voice became recognizable in animated films and series. His deep, resonant voice lent itself perfectly to animated characters, adding a layer of gravitas and warmth to films like Brother Bear and Kung Fu Panda, and the animated series Green Green Lantern, where he voiced the character Kilowog. The actor's decision to become a vegetarian and his involvement with animal rights advocacy revealed another facet of his personality. He became a spokesperson for PETA, using his platform to promote ethical treatment of animals and healthier lifestyle choices. This commitment reflected a personal ethos that extended beyond his on-screen personas, highlighting his compassion and dedication to the causes he believed in. In 2010, Duncan's personal life took a significant turn when he began dating Omarosa Manigo. This relationship, which unfolded in the public eye, added another layer to his story. Manigo, a reality TV personality known for her appearances on The Apprentice, brought a different kind of spotlight to Duncan's life, one that was often more focused on the couple's personal dynamics than on his professional achievements.
As Duncan's career continued to flourish, his health began to falter. In July 2012, he suffered a myocardial infarction that left him in a precarious state. Despite the efforts of Manigo, who performed CPR until medical help arrived, Duncan's condition remained critical. This health crisis marked the beginning of a challenging and ultimately tragic period in his life. As Michael Clark Duncan's star rose in Hollywood, his personal life began to take new turns, notably marked by his relationship with Manigo. Their relationship, while deeply personal, also played out in the public eye, capturing the interest of fans and media alike. Duncan, who had previously maintained a relatively private personal life, found himself at the center of a more scrutinized and, at times, sensationalized narrative. The couple's appearances at events and in the media portrayed a bond that seemed to blend Duncan's gentle giant persona with Manigault's assertive and bold character. However, amidst the glamour and public appearances, the actor's health was quietly becoming a concern. In the early hours of July 13, 2012, a critical health emergency unfolded that would drastically alter the course of his life. Duncan suffered a myocardial infarction, more commonly known as a heart attack, in his Los Angeles home. It was Manigo who found him in a state of distress and acted swiftly to administer CPR, a response that was crucial in keeping him alive until the arrival of emergency services. Duncan was rushed to Cedar sinai Medical Center, where he was admitted in critical condition. The news of his hospitalization sent shockwaves through the Hollywood community and among his fans worldwide. The image of the robust and vibrant actor, now fighting for his life, was a jarring contrast to the powerful characters he had portrayed on screen. In the weeks that followed, Duncan remained in the hospital with Manigo by his side. As reports of his condition varied, with some indicating moments of consciousness, the public and media remained fixated on his recovery. Manigo, acting as both partner and spokesperson during this time, faced the challenging task of managing the flow of information to the public while also dealing with the personal trauma of the situation. The gravity of Duncan's condition was profound. The heart attack had caused significant damage, and his recovery was far from certain. The medical team at Cedar sinai worked tirelessly to stabilize and improve his condition, but the path to recovery was fraught with complications. The actor's size and physicality, which had been his strength in his career, now presented unique challenges in his medical care. As the days turned into weeks, the initial outpouring of support and concern gradually shifted to a sobering realization of the severity of Duncan's condition. The once dominant figure in Hollywood, known for his roles that exuded strength and resilience, now lay in a hospital bed, engaged in the most crucial and personal battle of his life. The days following Duncan's hospitalization were filled with concern and hope for his recovery. However, his passing on September 3, 2012, marked the beginning of a new contentious chapter. In the wake of his death, a dispute emerged that would cast a long shadow over his legacy, centering on the will and estate of the late actor and involving his fiancée, Omarosa Manigo, and his family. At the heart of the controversy were allegations from Duncan's family, particularly his sister Judy, that Monago had unduly influenced Duncan into altering his will in her favor. Reports surfaced that the actor's will had been changed just months before his death, naming Manigo as the main beneficiary. This sudden and significant shift in the will's provisions raised suspicions among Duncan's family members. They questioned the timing and the circumstances under which these changes were made, suggesting that Duncan might not have been of sound mind due to his health issues. Judy Duncan expressed concerns that her brother was not himself in the months leading up to his death, citing instances of slurred speech and unsteady movements. She believed these signs indicated that Duncan was not in a state to make informed decisions about his estate. Her suspicions were further fueled by Manigault's actions while Duncan was hospitalized, alleging that Manigault seemed overly focused on his financial matters during this critical period. The family's concerns were compounded by reports that Manigault had begun selling some of Duncan's personal items, including his watches, cars, and memorabilia, without their knowledge or consent. This, according to Judy, was done in disregard of the family's wishes and interests, exacerbating the existing tensions. Manigo, for her part, defended her actions and the legitimacy of the will. She refuted the family's claims, insisting that she did not control the estate or finances and that the allegations were an attempt by Judy to extort money from her. Manigo's position was that she was the rightful beneficiary as designated by Duncan and that she was acting in accordance with his wishes. The dispute took on a public dimension, with both sides presenting their arguments in the media. 
Manigault portrayed the family as opportunistic, seeking to exploit Duncan's death for financial gain. Conversely, the family depicted Manigault as manipulative, accusing her of taking advantage of the late actor's vulnerable state to secure her financial future. Amidst these allegations and counter-allegations, the image of Michael Clark Duncan was, in a way, overshadowed by the brewing legal and public battle. The man who had captivated audiences with his performances and endeared himself to many through his gentle nature and humanitarian efforts was now at the center of a posthumous controversy. The legal and public battle over Duncan's will and estate, which unfolded following his death, revealed the complexities and raw emotions involved in disputes over legacy and belongings. Judy Duncan, Michael's sister, was at the forefront of the family's challenge. She claimed that significant changes made to Duncan's will in April 2012, just months before his death, were suspicious. The public discourse around the dispute was rife with speculation and opinion. Some sided with the family, sympathizing with their claims of potential manipulation and voicing concerns about the ethical implications of changing a will under dubious circumstances. Others saw Manigold's point of view, considering the possibility that Duncan had made those decisions of his own volition. The situation was further complicated by differing accounts of Duncan's state of mind and intentions. While the family portrayed him as vulnerable and potentially manipulated, Manigault depicted a different picture, suggesting that the changes to the will were a conscious and deliberate decision by the Academy nominee. As the legal battle ensued, it brought to light not only the contentious nature of estate disputes but also the emotional toll they take on all parties involved. The fight over Duncan's legacy became a public spectacle, overshadowing the memory of his contributions to the entertainment industry and his humanitarian efforts. The aftermath of the legal disputes over Michael Clark Duncan's will and estate represented a poignant and turbulent period in the narrative of his legacy. The protracted legal battle over Duncan's estate brought to the four issues that extended beyond the immediate parties involved. It sparked a broader conversation about the dignity of legacy, the rights of family versus partners, and the ethics surrounding wills and estates, especially in cases involving celebrities. The dispute between Manigault and Duncan's family, particularly his sister Judy, had evolved into a saga that captured public attention and stirred diverse reactions. For Duncan's fans and the general public, the unfolding drama was a departure from the image of the actor they had come to admire. Known for his commanding on-screen presence and gentle off-screen persona, the legal wrangling and accusations surrounding his estate painted a vastly different picture. This contrast was stark and unsettling for many who had held Duncan in high regard. The media coverage of the dispute further amplified the situation, with each new development dissected and analyzed. Commentators and legal experts weighed in, offering various perspectives and often adding to the speculative nature of the proceedings. This media attention, while bringing visibility to the case, also served to overshadow aspects of Duncan's life and career that had previously defined his public image. In the midst of this, the narratives presented by both sides continued to diverge. Manigo maintained her stance, asserting that her actions were in line with Duncan's wishes and accusing the family of attempting to tarnish her reputation and capitalize on Duncan's death. The family conversely persisted in their claims of undue influence and manipulation, insisting that the changes to the will did not reflect the true intentions of Duncan. Amidst the legal and media maelstrom, Duncan's legacy as an actor and a person began to be re-evaluated. While his performances and contributions to the film industry remained undisputed, the ongoing dispute cast a shadow, complicating the narrative of his life story. The man who had once been celebrated for his roles in philanthropy was now at the center of a contentious and unresolved debate. As the legal and public disputes over the actor's estate gradually receded from the headlines, a renewed focus emerged on his enduring legacy in the world of cinema and beyond. Duncan's journey from a modest upbringing in Chicago to becoming an acclaimed Hollywood actor is a testament to his resilience, talent, and the indomitable human spirit. His breakthrough role as John Coffey in The Green Mile not only earned him critical acclaim and an Academy Award nomination, but also secured his place in the pantheon of memorable film performances. Coffee, a character marked by both physical might and emotional depth, 
mirrored Duncan's own persona, a gentle giant capable of expressing a range of emotions that resonated deeply with audiences. Beyond The Green Mile, Duncan's diverse filmography spanning action, drama, and comedy showcased his versatility as an actor. From his commanding presence in Armageddon to his compelling portrayal in Daredevil, Duncan brought a unique blend of intensity and sensitivity to his roles. His voice work in animated films and series further highlighted his ability to imbue characters with a sense of warmth and gravitas. Duncan's contributions, however, extended beyond the screen. His advocacy for animal rights and his decision to adopt a vegetarian lifestyle reflected a compassionate worldview. His involvement with various charities and community initiatives demonstrated a commitment to giving back, a value instilled in him from an early age. Despite his untimely death and the ensuing controversies over his estate, Duncan's legacy endures in the memories of the genuine warmth he extended to those around him. His story, one of overcoming obstacles and achieving success through perseverance and talent, continues to inspire. The controversies surrounding his will and estate, while significant, do not define Duncan's legacy. Instead, they serve as a reminder of the complexities that often accompany the lives of public figures. The legal disputes and family disagreements are part of his story, but do not overshadow his accomplishments and the positive impact he had on the world. Reflecting on Duncan's life, it is clear that his influence goes beyond the roles he played. He was a figure of inspiration, a man who broke barriers and defied expectations. His legacy is not only in the characters he brought to life on screen, but in the example he set off screen. His journey from the south side of Chicago to Hollywood stardom is a narrative of determination and success against the odds. In the end, Michael Clark Duncan's legacy is multifaceted. It is the story of a man who, through his talent and character, left an indelible mark on the film industry and the hearts of those who knew him. Though marked by challenges and controversies, his life speaks to the power of resilience and the enduring impact of kindness and humanity. And that's it from us today. Until next time, thank you for watching.